conference um, I wanted to bring you guys along the journey I am one of the panelists today um, on the social media influence type panel um, so I wanted to give you guys some clips and show you what's going on I know at the beginning of the year I told you guys that I wanted to get more into speaking engagements and doing things like that so this is like my third or fourth maybe um, for this year and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. And I feel like I'm going to have to keep running to the bathroom, but God is still great, and I want him to use me and speak through me. So stay tuned for more. Thank you so much. How cute, guys. Do you guys see I cut my nails down? I was sick of the long ones and I kept breaking them, so I was over it. women who uh, want chiseled abs and, you know, like this picture of perfection, uh, but they <laughs> I got to go with them. <laughs> but he wasn't always like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, th things to me that can either, even, either be fixed or worked on. I meet mean, a lot of women who, you know, oh, he got hair bumps. So, you know, I, I, just recently, I'm like, really? Hair bumps? Just took him out, right? He's, he's off, on the list. He got hair bumps. That can be fixed. Yeah. Um, so, I, I would say that look at <laughs> Make sure your expectations are realistic and, and are fair. I mean, one of the women that um, wanted just this fine man, she needed to go to the gym herself. So it's like, oh, you, you want what you are not even willing to do for yourself. Good, I really don't want to do it. But it was that very thing that I did that allowed me and prepared me to have the job that I have here today. And the key thing that I learned, as this is talking about empowering yourself and being the CEO of you, is that oftentimes we have to do things where we trust God. It might not be something that we want to do, but it's that very thing that we do because God knows where our destination is and where we're going and how to really put our steps together to allow us to be there. That then allows us, like I am, to have the role that I have here today. So in sharing that, one of the things that I want to kind of reveal to you what my path and journey was, after I graduated from Yale, I worked in Houston at a hospital, and I was a fellow. So that was like the lowest you could go in regards to leadership. We did all of the work, but I was just excited to be there. I was driven. I wanted to be able to be at the top. So I got a manager position over community benefits and consulting projects, and I was doing really, really well. And then one day, the CEO came up to me and said, Hey, Kim, you know, whenever they're like, hey, you know, they don't normally say hey like that, you know something's up. <laughs> so she came up to me and was like, hey, Kim, um, we have a division and it's not doing well. It's losing a lot of money and nobody wants it, but we think that'll be a great job for you. You know, it's a director position. So I looked around and I was like, okay, so you said that nobody wants it, it's losing money, it's not doing well, so why would I want this job? I'm good where I am. Well, one of the things that I thought in that moment that I was about to say no was that this was really a growth opportunity for me. It was a time to truly put into action trusting in God because one of the things that came out of that job is that it wasn't a typical healthcare job. It was an international education and training job. That's not exciting. <laughs> 
<laughs> at all. It's exactly what it was, an international education and training job, but I was at a hospital to do healthcare in Houston. So I didn't know how I was gonna navigate from an international education and training job to do healthcare in Houston, but I knew that that was a growth opportunity that I would have to trust God in. And that was pretty scary, because up until that point, I was doing really well. But I took it, and when I took that job, I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to give it everything I have and do it with excellence. Yes, yes. So within one year, we were able to turn that division around. ...today about social media. Ladies, y'all give it up for Miss Jalisa Ebon. promote this woman. I'm a huge advocate for her business, but she designs the most beautiful pillows, gives the most beautiful gifts. Y'all give her a round of applause. Mm -hmm. And of course our lovely host for the Woman of Purpose Conference. Give it up for Miss Stacy Ike. doing fabulous on social media as social media influencers. I think that's the word we all use, social media influencers. And it seems like, you know, everyone is really trying to do something on the gram, okay? But what I love about all of you is that you are truly walking in purpose. You are really doing, and, and, and the women that you proclaim to be on Instagram or Facebook, that's really who you are in person. So I admire that about all of you. But I'd like to hear from each one of you, how has social media influenced your level of involvement with posting news, pictures, and updates? Um, I believe that for me, uh, I use my outlets to share my journey and be transparent. Come on. Um, and I think with sharing your journey and being transparent, it removes all of the other pressures mm. because you're not faking to be something that you're not. And you don't feel like, you know, there's this strive to be perfect or keep up. Um, and specifically for me, I rarely post a lot of the news. Um, if I do, I find a way to relate it back to the word, back to ministry, back to prayer. Um, but I try to keep my page just being a light and being somewhere you can go to get encouraged and inspired and not always, you know, hearing the negative that you hear everywhere else. Everywhere yes, else. yes, yes. Thank you, ladies. Those were some phenomenal responses. Thank you. Now, this kind of, this next question, it kind of ties into what we've already said, but I want to go a little bit deeper with this. Um, how do you remain focused on your mission with the busyness of social media? I mean, I, I really strongly believe that there are many women, uh, not just in this audience, but in general, um, who find that maybe they, maybe I should do this, or make my page a little more like this, um, and then I'll get the attention that I need. But that may not be their calling or their specific purpose or mission. So how do you ladies stay focused? I feel like social media actually keeps me accountable to my mission because I told people on social what my mission is. So anytime I deviate, somebody gonna DM me. For sure. And that doesn't happen often, truly, because as she said, which is so beautiful, they're the same thing. They really, really are. And so with social, it's like, if I'm talking about being a light, I'm talking about being, you know, encouraging or talking about something hard or whatever's happening, that is the funnel to stay focused on that. If I told you guys, man, we gotta get to work, I have to say it, turn the phone off and get to work. Because tomorrow you're gonna ask me, so how does the work go? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think it actually keeps me focused because you're being so real, you're being so honest. So if you've said it, you gotta do it. And it keeps me accountable. So I, I try not to get too distracted because it is a, it's such a, social media can be an incredible tool. And in that regard, I take it as a tool to constantly remind me, this is what I'm doing. I am here to be a light. Mm. To piggyback on what I said before is being the tra being, being transparent and taking people on the journey. Um, I know for me, for the people who do follow me, 
Um, I recently left my corporate job, and I didn't wait years down the line and say, yeah, guys, you know, a few years ago I quit. When I quit, I made a video, and I said, listen, I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills, you know, I have a little savings, but I don't know what's going to happen, but I've taken this leap and I trust God, but I'm going to keep you guys along the journey for me. And even with the content that I create, I'll say, you know, this is my first time creating this type of content, so if it's not with the rest of the influencers that you guys, you know, watch it, because this is not what it looks like, but people see, like, you don't have to come out the gate being perfect. You don't have to come out the gate knowing how to do it. Keep trying. And as you do it, you'll get it. But that's the message that I try to get across, is, you know, just start. You know, and take people from the beginning. And what I'd like to also add to that, y'all, Jaleesa quit her full-time corporate gig to be a social media influencer. Y'all give a round of applause for that because that's, that, that's a bold step. And didn't have it all figured out, but she did it, she's doing it, and it seems like you're really thriving in the role that you're in now. So, thank you. Alright, so this next one. Um, some of you in the audience may not know this person, but I, I love following her. I think she's a super radical person, but Lovey a giant. Um, yeah, she went on a huge rant about people coming correct with her when they slide in her DMs. So I'm pretty sure you ladies, well, all of you ladies, you have your followings. So I'm sure you get people that slide in your DMs looking for their next big opportunity. Uh, but what is the best way to make contact with another influencer online without seeming thirsty? And also, how do you guys feel when you get those DMs? I think for me, relating it back in a spiritual way, um, we were just up here, you know, singing how grateful we are. I think for me. When people message and comment, like, I don't deserve the audience that I have. Um, I don't deserve for people to admire or, you know, in be inspired by anything that I do because of, you know, who I am. And you know what I mean? To me, I'm undeserving from, you know, a God perspective. Um, so for me, I'm grateful. Um, although when people do message me, if it's, you know, in terms of business and things, I will redirect them to email. But like she said, that's the only way that they can contact you. Um, so I definitely just agree with that. Um, but I feel like, you know, we want these people to follow and be encouraged to be inspired and, you know, see God in us. So who are we to, you know, push them away or, you know, negate or, you know, be negative in terms of when they're reaching out. Um, but to me, I'm honored. Wonderful. I think so. I'm going to throw a little. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit on the other side. I, I reply to every DM and, and message. Don't but you just I, love it when you have a panel and they really discuss? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is good. The real, yes. And I followed Lovey for a long time. Um, and so when she posted that and talked about it, she actually like went through on her stories very informally. This is how you should do it. Like she actually broke it down in a more positive way because for her especially, there's no way that she's gonna be able to get to everything that she, and that's really what her issue was, right? It was like, I wanna help you, let me teach you how to do this. When you reach out, tell them why you're reaching out. What is it that you are Don't looking for? Don't send a 10-page uh, yes. message via DM when it should really be an email. Or one where it's supposed to say, you're not really sure email. like hey, what it's saying at the end of it. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. always the hard that's always the hardest part. And like, it says your the email is right there in their description, so it's like those type of things you should send via an email. Yes, okay. Right. No, well, she was just. I just want to make sure that we know she was trying to be educational, right? She was really yes. trying to help people out in order to. And it's the same way when you're trying to like look for a mentor or you're trying to apply for a job. Everyone knows you have to send a cover letter and your resume. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's kind of the same concept around that. So. I'm, I'm in the middle, I'll say. I'm not on the side. Or in terms of us influencers reaching out to brands, people always come to me and ask me, you know, when you first started, did you reach out to brands, things like that. I think the biggest thing is providing the value up front and saying why you're messaging because that, you know, sets the track for the rest of it. Do I even need to read the rest of this? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, but I think that, yeah, it's just the, the way that you go about it and if she was being educational about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So amazing. This atmosphere is so amazing right now. And as I was listening to those words in that song, don't know why, but I'm grateful. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. It ministered to me so much because yesterday as I was driving to the conference, I just took a moment to breathe and allowed everything to sink in. And I said, man, God, I remember in 2009 when I was sitting in my room and it was dark, I was strung out on drugs, and he began to show me my purpose. He began 
to show me what I can do. Doing things like standing right here before all of you women, and I just was like, God, me? I'm worthy of something like this? I can be this? I can be this? Man, I really don't know why, but God, I'm grateful. to the vlog. Go ahead, Go to, mm -hmm. if you want to know anything about Jaleesa Eugenia Chavon, go to www.theblackroomexperience. I wrote a book all about our relationship. Yeah. And you will get to find out all the details of who she is before she became who she is. Okay. The truth. The tea. You're going to get all the tea. All the tea. Yay. Our lives, it's okay. In the speaker lounge. 